So I'm going on a socation, a sewing vacation, <laughs> just for four days with my sister. We've rented a small cottage just in the countryside and we're predominantly going to do sewing. We've both got our projects and yeah, we're gonna have a great time. We've got a few activities planned just to break up the time so we're not in the cottage all day, every day, um, but we're aiming for uh, maybe two thirds of the day doing projects. And we've got games planned, audio books, all that sort of stuff, TV series. Um, so yeah, we're just leaving all our responsibilities at home and gonna do some sewing. But I think I've packed too much. So let me show you what I'm taking with me and let me know if you think I've took too much. <laughs> Perhaps, I don't think I will have taken too much if I touch all of the projects. I'm not necessarily thinking that I'm gonna finish everything that I take, it is only four days. Um, but if I start it and make some good progress on the projects, then I'm happy. So then this bag here is all of my sort of tools and things. There's going to be more that I need to put in here because I haven't done the majority of my packing. I've sort of grouped all the projects together. I've made lists. So I'm sure there'll be other tools and things that I need to add into here. <laughs> this is one of those Biani bags. I think it's a sewing caddy, but I bought this pre-made. I didn't make it. So I've got a uh, spray adhesive, of cutting boards, rulers, threads, all the notions and my tiny iron in there. Now this is the box where I keep my temperature quilt. Um, it is uh, got quite a bit of room in there so I'm going to add other bits and pieces in here instead of taking up empty space in the car because we are only staying within England. <laughs> We're not going anywhere on a flight. So yes I've got the temperature quilt Oh, but I've just remembered I've got to take the actual temperature quilt. <laughs> So this is the pouch where I keep my temperature quilt and I'm hoping that while I'm there I'll be able to join some of the rows because I'm joining it by hand and it takes around an evening to join it completely so I want to spend some time doing that. Then we've got some knitting. Then we've got my double gauze quilt. <laughs> this is very nearly finished. This is just a whole cloth that's hand quilted. It's very nearly finished. I've just got one repeat to do and then I just need to add the binding. So again, that'll be like an evening job. And this is the box that goes with it with all of my, because I'm using just DMC thread. Um, I've got a video on this quilt, so I'll leave the link to that. But hopefully I'll be showing you that finished. And then my sister has been asking me to save all of my tiny, tiny scraps, trimmings and things. And she wants to do something called confetti quilting with all of this, where you layer it underneath tool. So I've got some netting for that. I've got some fabric to go with that because I think she's going to make some type of mat for underneath my sewing machine. So we'll need backing and binding for that. Then I've got this really nice applique wall hanging. It's only a mini thing. And again, you pull it underneath tool, so it's really quick to do. So I've pulled together, um, I've got a kit here with some of the, is it tool, toile, tool? I don't know. Um, <laughs> so in here, I've put together wadding, um, a plain fabric, a backing fabric, and then pinks and blues for the mushrooms. And then this whole wallet contains everything that I need for my patchwork houses. So in here, I've already cut up and bunched together loads of the components that I need for the houses. If anything, I think I'll probably run out of low volumes. So I have got that one that will be used in the mini quilt. So. So I've got all of those to take. I've got a bunch of fabric for different trees and things. So I've got more than enough in here. And at the back, I've got the houses that I've already made. So I'm hoping to join quite a few together. And then the last thing essential, my wall cutting, uh, not cutting mat, ironing mat. <laughs> so yeah, I'll hopefully um, do this as like a vlog style and include some more footage of the holiday here. So I'll roll the footage there. <laughs> 
So here we are on the road, just arrived in the Cotswolds, absolutely beautiful scenery around here. Just to let you know there is a little bit of flickering lights for the next 20 seconds or so. Obviously we stumbled upon a craft shop, we popped inside, so there was a few bits of fabric so of course I bought a little bit and my sister also bought some yarn. In true British summertime, well, spring, it was absolutely pouring of rain, so we appreciated it when we got to the cottage and we was able to hunker down for the night and start our sewing. We're staying in a beautiful stone cottage. It's got so many beautiful handmade touches to it, so it is just perfect. And we've decided to set up shop here in the kitchen on the dining room so that we can be close to the kettle. <laughs> I decided to get straight into hand quilting the Baptist fan because this is my aim to get this quilt finished on this little holiday because if you know I started this as a souvenir for the last holiday that me and my sister took so I thought it would be quite fitting if I was able to get this quilt finished and a little kick up the behind that I needed. <laughs> So it's now the morning of day two. Yesterday we had a day out round the villages here in the Cotswolds and then we had an afternoon. It was quite rainy so it was really nice. We had an afternoon in the cottage where my sister started planning her quilt that she's doing and I made a good headway on the hand quilting on my Baptist fan quilt that I've bought. So I'll go downstairs and I'll show you what we was doing yesterday and I'll also include some footage of where we get to today. So I've been working on getting this top row of quilting done and I've just got two more of the fan repeats to do. I've got maybe two inches there that won't be quilted so I'm just going to trim that off before I do the binding just as part of the squaring off. I just love how it looks. And then I've made this really lovely quilt label that I did on my embroidery machine and I'm going to attach that to the back. Um, I think I'll put some binding around it. My sister's doing a project with Indian block printed fabric so she's given me this and I thought it goes beautifully with it. So I'll use that just for binding this rather than the whole quilt. So then last night my sister spent the evening planning her quilt that she's going to make. It's going to be an Indian block printed quilt with some fabrics that my dad bought back from India. And this is the layout that she's chosen. I'll show you the fabrics. So these are the two that my dad bought back from India. And then she's bought some extras to go alongside it. I think she got a few little free samples from the shop. What a difference a day makes, such a sunny day, there were some clouds in the sky here but they blew over but of course we found another knitting and craft shop so that was really nice. This was such a tiny little shop and it was just packed floor to ceiling full of so many yarny delights. So 
So after a lovely morning out, we was back at the cottage around one, I think, and straight into quilt prep. There was my sister just ironing her fabrics. That took her quite a little bit of time. And I thought I would do some sewing on my houses that I've been making, the small little foundation paper piece in houses, and to make a good headway on this. I already had a stack of around 40 houses that I'd made at home and it was so nice just to get the time to join them all and just play around with the layout but then I've made some additional trees to go in with the houses and I'm going to spend some time joining I think I made 60 all together or I had 60 and I joined them into three blocks of 20 so I did make good progress on this. So let's go into the living room and see what my sister's getting up to. So she's laid out her quilt wadding, not necessarily to base the quilt top, just to use as a little bit of a design wall so that she can adapt her quilt plans as she goes along and make sure that she doesn't go outside of the amount of wadding that she has. So she's laying out a rough centre panel here and here it is all nicely sewn and she wasn't sure how big she'd be able to make the quilt top so she made a centre panel and then I believe tomorrow she's going to start expanding upon that and getting it as big as she can so stay tuned to the next episode to see if we have two finished quilts on this beautiful sewing holiday that we've took together thank you so so much for watching and as always I appreciate all of your beautiful comments